What's up? I'm Inezalea from ToleratedCinematics.com and today I will be showing you how to create this famous zoom transition in Adobe Premiere Pro. Alright, so that looks very, very cool. As you can see, it has this zoom transition and I know there are a few tutorials already explaining how to create this, but I did something different. I added some kind of glitch effect into that. So in this tutorial, I will just be covering the zoom in effect and then in a different tutorial, I will be showing you how to apply that glitch effect in there, which you can then, of course, use in different projects as well. So let's fire up Adobe Premiere Pro and get started. To enjoy my videos be sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to make sure that you get notified when I upload new videos. Alright here we are in Adobe Premiere Pro and let's take a look on how to create this epic hyper zoom effect and right here in the preview you actually see this uh, glitch effect. This is for another tutorial but it's all modular so you can add this up on top of your hyper zoom later on. In this tutorial I will just be focusing on the zoom itself and the cool thing about this tutorial is it's going to show you how to create a hyper zoom which is modular. Meaning that if you're going to put different videos on it later on if you would replace this video or this video the effect would still apply and you wouldn't have to redo everything over again. If you don't wish to follow this tutorial and you just want to apply presets and be done with it in a few clicks, then I would recommend you to check out the link in the description. This will bring you to the page of our Hyper Glitch Zoom Effect preset in Premiere Pro, which you can then import and drag on top of your adjustment layers and have the effect immediately. It also includes a short tutorial on how to use this effect, and it also helps to support our YouTube channel. Alright, so without further ado, for the people that do want to know how this effect is created, I will just delete all these effects right here. Here we are in my project manager, I will create a new adjustment layer. I'm going to click OK and I'm going to rename this adjustment layer to Replicator. OK, and then I'm going to place this on top of my timeline here, on top of the layers. On the second video layer, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit right here. As you can see, I start this adjustment layer just at the beginning of my second clip right here and just make sure it's around five frames long. So I'm going to hit the right arrow key on my keyboard and check how long it is. One, two, three, four, five. And there we go. We can trim this down to five. Okay, great. So we have a replicator uh, adjustment layer for five frames. Once you have done the replicator effect, let's search for mirror and let's apply the mirror effect to the replicator adjustment layer. And we want to bring this in just to the left here and just make sure that it actually aligns this seam right here because currently we see a repeated video right here on, on the right and we actually want to mirror this. We want to flip this around so it actually starts on the other side. So with the mirror effect, you can do this. We are going to bring this closer together like this and there we go then I'm going to apply the mirror effect again and this time I'm going to set the reflection to 180 which is going to bring it on the other side and then just move it to the left And there we go. So uh, now we have a mirror on the left and on the right. We just need to do the top and the bottom. So apply the mirror effect once again. And this time I'm going to set your reflection to 90. I'm going to position it upwards or actually downwards. Um, 90 is the down part. And there we go. And apply it once more. And this time I'm going to set it to negative 90. That's going to bring it on top here. And there we have it. Okay, so that's perfect. Now we have it replicated and mirrored on the uh, on all edges right here. And it's also going to depend on what you're going to be using as footage. As you can see, the perspective is a little bit off. It's not going to extend uh, the lines here. So if you have like a blue sky or something that is very solid, uh, it's going to look a lot better. So it depends on the footage that you're using to make this effect work. But Again, we're going to be using a little bit of blur, so that's perfect. So now we have this effect right here. So we have this video and then the replicator effect right here. Now let's create a new adjustment layer. Go to new item, new adjustment layer and click OK and rename this to transform. 
We're going to apply this effect right here and now we want to meet it at the end of our replicator effect. But instead of making it only five frames long on one end, we're going to make it 10 frames long and make sure that the center is right here. So if we're going to the left with the left arrow, one, two, three, four, five, we have it starting at the fifth frame before it actually uh, intersects here. I'm going to the effects panel again, search for transform and I'm going to and I'm going to apply the transform effect to the new adjustment layer. At the beginning of my adjustment layer, I want to click on the stopwatch for the scale, which is currently set at 100. Make sure that you're actually affecting the scale of the transform effect and not the scale of the motion right here, which you can also animate, but that is not what we want. We want to apply um, this to the scale right here. Okay, so then I'm going to move a little bit further away till the end here, actually the last keyframe, which is right here. I'm going to click on this and I'm going to set the scale to 300 like this. And now we have an animation of our zoom in effect. Looks pretty cool, but it's very linear, very abrupt. It has a constant speed of zooming in, which doesn't make it look like it's in the flow. So let's say I want to make this a little bit more smooth. So what I will do is select both of these keyframes. I'm going to right click on them and click on Bezier. This is going to make it a lot smoother but we want to make it a little bit more explicit. So what I will do is go next to the stopwatch for the scale and click on this arrow to open up the graph editor right here. At the beginning here, I will click over here and make this a little bit longer. That's going to make sure that it starts off very slow, ramps up in speed and then slowly comes to a stop again right here. Again, we can extend this one a little bit more so it takes a little bit longer to come to a stop, which is going to make it look a little bit smoother. Okay, so we have a pretty cool animation and as you can see, it's going to start off slowly. And of course, because we're working with only five frames, it's going to go very quickly. Um, but that's what I want in this effect because it's a very aggressive sport. Um, but what you can do is just extend this a little bit longer. Instead of 10 frames, take 20 frames and it's going to take uh, less time. So you can extend this to right here and just extend it a little bit longer, like so. Then click on it and just make sure that your keyframes are starting at the beginning. And it's going to look a little bit different as you can see right here, but that's not what I want. I will just undo these changes. And what I wanna do next is make sure that we have a little bit of motion blur because currently we're zooming in here, but we don't see any motion blur and this doesn't look right. So we'll click on my transform effect, scroll down. And right here you will see that use compositions shutter speed and that's not what I want so I'm going to uncheck this and change the shutter angle to 360 which is the maximum you can apply right here. And if you're going to wait a little bit you're going to see that it's going to apply some zoom blur effect which is exactly what we want. All right, so that's how to create this effect. Next I will demonstrate quickly what you can do with the preset that you can buy on our website to apply that glitch effect. I'm going to create a new adjustment layer click OK and I'm going to drag this on top right here. I'm going to click on that adjustment layer, hold Alt and just duplicate it two more times on top of it. Go to the effects presets and go to that folder and apply the red shift channel, the green shift and the blue shift. I'm going to this adjustment layer and change the blending mode to a lighten, lighten and lighten. And there we have the same kind of color. As you can see, that won't change anything. What you want to do now is open the transform effect for one of these channel shifts, for example, the blue channel. Open the position and click on the stopwatch for the position. Move this keyframe to the beginning, create another keyframe, move this keyframe to the end, and then offset it like 10 frames. So I'm going to hold shift and move it up 70. Then go to another adjustment layer, for example, the green shift, go to the transform and click on the position, move it to the end, Create another one, move it to the beginning. And this time I'm going to offset it to the other side. So I'm going to set it to a 950. And now if we're going to preview this by going to sequence, render into out. And then you have this glitch transition. As you can see right here, we have some glitch effects. Of course, you can make it a little bit stronger if you want to by going to the center. And there you go, you have some glitch effects. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give this video a like and definitely subscribe for my future content. Also check out our website. We have a bunch to offer. And if you buy something from our website, it helps to support the channel. So apart from that, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.